Good morning guys, today is Friday and I thought I would vlog because I have like two pages of video ideas but I haven't filmed any of them because I've set this ridiculously high bar for myself in terms of video quality so I'm kind of tiger momming my YouTube channel right now and it's not working so I thought I'd vlog for you guys today Oh my god, I haven't vlogged in so long. I totally forgot I have a flip flip out I took too much, don't judge me. I used to hope everyone loved me. Now I could just give a fuck. I hate all the things. Time to head to work. I think my voice cracked a little bit. I usually like to throw on a podcast in the morning because the commute is pretty long. Um, right now I've been listening to Not Overthinking, which is a podcast sort of about like how can we get into the habit of reading, how do we take advice, stuff like that. Sometimes I put on something in the marketing business realm. Other than that, I'm usually listening to either nature, science, or just the Not Overthinking podcast. And if I'm not feeling a podcast that day, then I'll listen to my Spotify playlist. Okay, no more vlogging. I need to drive and listen to my podcast. I don't wanna stay the night. I don't wanna stay the night. I don't wanna stay the night. On the way here, I was listening to a nature podcast on HEFTEF, which is heart failure with preserved ejection fraction. And because they can't really treat HEFTEF in humans, um, they mainly just treat like hypertension and diabetes, which are like the comorbidities. So in these mouse models, when they eventually developed HEFPEF from overfeeding, there was an overproduction of nitric oxide, which is a signaling molecule, and apparently that covalently binds to proteins and impacts the physiology and development of HEFPEF. Nature and science tend to talk about multiple topics in one podcast, but I'll only listen to ones I care about. So yeah, don't feel pressure to listen to every episode just because you feel like it's good for you. I think my new favorite podcast might be the TEDx um, health podcast. So I listened to one on TEDx health that was about how psychedelics and MDMA can be used in psychotherapy. Um, there's also another one that I listened to that was pretty short about loneliness and how it's sort of a universal feeling and part of the human condition. So that's what I did on my way here. But you don't play nice, yeah I don't mean to rush you, baby Indecisiveness got me feeling crazy And I don't want any bad guys. So, just passed by the main hospital It's the funky building with the wiggly I don't even know how to describe it, but that's the main hospital. Heading over to lab. I'm doing cardiothoracic surgery research this summer because um, I have a background already in cardiovascular research, so it's just nice to build off of the foundation. My beautiful sandwich. <laughs> That's Gabby. This is Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I dipped out of lab a little early today. Um, it's like 3 p.m. I'm going to pick up some boba from Share Tea and head over to see AY. I'm at a different hospital now, but I'm walking over to my car and I realized that I never really explained what I'm doing this summer. I'm interning at the Cardiovascular Research Center at Stanford and what our lab is studying is atrial fibrillation, which is essentially when your atria don't really beat in synchrony. Specifically, once patients get procedures for, let's say, coronary artery bypass grafts um, or other valve replacements, they're a lot more prone to getting um, atrial fibrillation after their operations. So essentially, my project is looking at the genetic markers that might predispose patients to developing post-operative AFib. It's really cool because I get to work on both clinical and classical wet lab bio research. So on the one hand, I have to comb through patient databases and look through medical records, which is really cool because I'm going to 
have to do that eventually in medical school anyway so it's really um, awesome getting experience with that already in addition to that I'm also doing siRNA transfections and also using quantitative real-time PCR to track the levels of gene expression and seeing whether the transfection actually worked and a gene was knocked down. Yeah, I really love everyone in my lab. I made some really amazing friends. We went to play trivia one time and volleyball and it was so fun. Research can definitely be intimidating. The stereotype of undergrads in a research lab is like, you know, that kid who's like sitting in the corner on their laptop doing nothing. But um, I'm really glad that I've actually been able to work independently while still having guidance and mentorship when I don't know what I'm supposed to do. To be quite honest, most people who do research at Stanford who are undergrads or high schoolers, especially high schoolers, if you are a high schooler doing research at Stanford, like you definitely have to have a connection because there is, I think, a rule against like having people who are under 18 work in labs. So there's like some legal liability surrounding that and that's why you can't really just cold email and get an opportunity as a high schooler at Stanford. But if you are an undergrad, it's definitely possible. That's how I did it. Networking definitely is the primary way of getting into labs at Stanford though. But if you'd like me to talk about my summer internship application process and how I got through that without networking, feel free to leave a comment down below and I will get to that. Yeah, I think ultimately it just comes down to being really persistent. <laughs> As you can see, we got the goods. If you ever go to Shirti and Paul to make sure to tell them that you go to Stanford because they give you a pretty hefty discount. Please! Oh! Wow, he actually greeted me. He Hello. Treats, like that to everyone. That came out wrong. Ooh! <laughs> Wait, where's, which one's mine? The one that I didn't drink. Ooh. <laughs> Your dog is literally just oh like. <laughs> Come here. Thank you. Come here. Hello. This is my dog. His name is Blaze. B L A I S E H seven. Cute. Aww. Aww. So social. Blaze, it's okay. <laughs> oh, boys. Bye. <laughs> oh, the background looks so nice. Welcome back. Welcome back. So. I'm sure a lot of your viewers would be interested in no, my card. in, in, in hearing in hearing the story behind your wallet. So earlier this week, my lab friend saw me using a rubber band <laughs> to hold all of my credit cards together, which I actually lost all of them at the same time once. All of your rubber bands? No, all of my credit cards. Oh, what? <laughs> I like left it in the mail room. <laughs> so I went there and they were like, you left all of your credit cards and your driver's license here and I was like he saw that I had an unmet need he made Wait. me a custom 3d printed Gucci wallet for my credit card it's an off-brand 3d printed wallet it's not off-brand it's well, on-brand so you have a comic sans wallet mm -hmm. I'm the person who's gonna ask me questions today <laughs> all right get off I'm gonna I'm gonna invite you on to my show okay welcome back <laughs> Good afternoon. You're here with another episode. Uh, wait, no, take two, take two, take two. <laughs> Is it Jason? How's it going, man? You at the YMCA? You see you at Open Gym? How's it going? Huh? I don't have friends. All right, is this your show or mine? It's your show. Yeah, exactly. So stop talking. <laughs> All right, ready? Welcome back for another episode of Talking with AY. Now, today I have a very special guest. Um, she is a student at Brown University. She is a Stanford researcher over the summer. She is a vlogger. Without further ado, I introduce to you May. Yeah. Oh my God. Thank you. All right, are. settle down, settle down. Settle down. <laughs> let's just wait. Let's just wait for the applause to die down. So May, it's great to have you here. Thank you. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. You're welcome. <laughs> Okay, getting a little bit uncomfortable. <laughs> Break. This episode is brought to you by. So May, you just finished your second year of college. Oh my yeah, gosh, you're I did. halfway. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Can you describe your sophomore year with three adjectives, please? Really, really difficult. What was one thing that you're super proud of in sophomore year? 
I, I want to say like it's not limited to sophomore year but it was definitely a progression type of improvement that I'm proud of is I've learned to be more proactive in seizing opportunities rather than waiting for them to come to me about that what do you say to the person who's a little bit shy about seizing opportunities like you might think that if you mess up people are gonna laugh at you or if you get rejected from things like that lowers your value as a person she's describing my life <laughs> but really no one's gonna know about your failures besides you unless you publicize it in which case people might learn from your failures so really there's no harm in going out there and trying to seize those opportunities so let's get into specifics because that's what our viewers want do you want to know all the things that got rejected no no no, no, no. <laughs> how about this you talked about seizing opportunities what's a specific opportunity that yeah. you seized this year okay um i'm part of this organization on campus called brown science prep and it's something that i've been a part of since freshman year since the very beginning um i actually got waitlisted initially to the club and that already was for the club i know i get into bound again we listed in the clubs like homie it's hard you know i was already a little demoralized i was like oh man like i'll never be able to make it to leadership in this club mm -hmm. but through persistence and showing that i genuinely cared and like i pitch a lot of different improvements that can be made that are actually implemented within the span of like a semester or two and because of that i'm going to be the next uh one of the next coordinators so that's really exciting Woo! so yeah. let's say let's say you were to go back to that may who was scared about seizing opportunities who was a little bit demoralized yeah. about all the all the red tape you have to go through in order to get where you want yeah. to go what would you say to her that you should fail more like you should really push yourself to fail more frequently because people regret you know like regret passing up opportunities rather than regretting failure so so are you advocating that i seek out <laughs> failure instead of success yes that's gonna be our headliner forget success if someone gives you an opportunity to be like no i want failure on a real note though just because you're handed an opportunity doesn't mean that you should take it I think that's also a mistake. You have to that learn how to say no, right? Yeah, I, that's a really big lesson I've learned this year. I think it's always better to commit really deeply to only a few things rather than half-assing everything. Like if you just go to club meetings and stuff, even if you're like president of the club, you're not gonna get shit done. Mm -hmm. Back home in much more comfortable clothing. It's 7:38 ish right now. I'm usually at the gym, but I don't feel like going today. I would like some feedback from all of you. I've been on YouTube for like two years now and I've definitely experimented with a lot of styles of videos like sit down, uh, more informative videos, vlogging. So if you could comment down below with your favorite video of mine, that sounds really conceited, but like the video of mine that you've enjoyed the most or whatever video made you decide that I was worthy of a subscription, that would be really helpful. And in general, whether you prefer videos that are more scripted or videos that are more just me being me. I always have been more comfortable putting out videos that are scripted because it's not as vulnerable and putting yourself on the internet is a very scary thing so I always want to strike a balance between professionalism while also still being myself and someone who's trustworthy your feedback is always appreciated as long as it's constructive feel free to leave negative comments I was on YouTube recently it seems like everyone is having an existential crisis at the exact same time like suddenly everyone is making videos about like getting their life together and planning funny because I was going to make a plan with me type of video but I thought it would be weird to do it in the middle of the summer but I don't know maybe I will maybe I won't I've been getting more acquainted with my iPad and I'm trying to shift over to using it for planning and note taking. If you want to see more of that stuff, check out my Instagram. I'll leave it somewhere or whatever. If you enjoy this vlog style content, please let me know by leaving a like on this video and I will see you later. Bye. <laughs>